So here's the little part that got printed on the 3D printer. Uh, this is the, uh, for the rail guide. So the linear bearing just sits in here. It's a very tight fit, so I'll go over to the vise and uh, just press it in. A perfect fit. I'll do the second one. Okay, we got a perfect fit. Now I'm just going to go mark the sled where these holes are and drill them out so I can mount this onto the sled. And there's the uh, router sled now on the rails running along those linear bearings. That seems to work really, really nicely, so much better. So now we'll work on the structure of the, uh, of the arc router. It was uh, a little wobbly in the last video, so we'll strengthen that up. Okay, cut a couple pieces now to uh, strengthen up the arms of our arc router sled, arc cutting router sled. <clears throat> so uh, these are some pieces from oak that'll be uh, give some strength. So there'll be another piece on the underside here too. So these uh, these two pieces will kind of sandwich uh, the arms and the and the top. So I'm going to drill those holes out, countersink them, and get some screws in there. Probably put a little glue on it as well, just for safekeeping. So, All right, so there's our uh, cap put on the top of the arc cutting router sled. That has uh, firmed it up substantially, so I'm, I'm happy with that. That's going to work really well. Now, unfortunately, I have run out of 3D uh, printer element, printer filament. So I'm going to uh, make a couple modified versions of this out of uh, wood uh, as temporary, uh, as a temporary measure. So I can get the router sled uh, put in place and just see that that's going to work the way that I expect it to. So I'll be back when I have a modified version of this. All right, we're back in. Um, I just re-drilled uh, holes in, in the existing pieces here, and that's given me enough uh, to work with. It's not perfect. There's a little bit of binding because these holes aren't exactly where I need them to be. So I will reprint these with uh, my 3D printer just so I get exactly where I want. Plus, when I'm printing with the 3D printer, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, an edge on here and an edge here, just to prevent this from racking at all. Uh, for now, what I need to do when I set it to the right height is use a square and make sure that I get uh, uh, this thing perpendicular to the, to the edge. Uh, that way it prevents any binding and the blade is going to be exactly where I need it to be, or the bit rather. So, you can see I have movement going back and forth this way, which is what I'm going to need for doing any beating. <clears throat> and also when I'm doing a smoothing operation, you know, you make one pass that way and move the rotor over a little bit, and make another pass, move the rotor over, and back and forth like so. So, uh, yeah, very firm now. There's no racking going on here. Um, this is, this is going to do the job. And again, Using this little trim rotor, I'm only going to be taking off just a teeny little bit at a time, so it's not like I'm going to be stressing um, the apparatus. The rotor is going to uh, feel more strain than this whole uh, swing arm. So, <clears throat> with that now in place, I need to figure out how to build a little table to uh, hold the piece in place. So I'll get on to that now. Okay, I've got a piece laid out that's going to represent the table that'll hold the workpiece into the 
arc cutting rudder sled. So from this piece of scrap wood that I have lying around, I'm gonna cut it right in half and give me two pieces, a left side and a right side of the table. Um, I will cut it off here for length. I'm gonna make a little notch out of here so that it will fit over the base of the arc table, arc cutting rudder table. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I'll probably just cut that arc up here just yeah, it doesn't have to be done, but I, I'm just going to do it for simplicity. All right, there's our pieces uh, cut. Now we'll work on getting the uh, little piece that goes between the two to prevent some racking. All right, we are ready to give this arc cutting router sled a try. I've got the table uh, constructed, the piece mounted in there. I have this table anchored down to the base with some angle brackets, one on that side, one on this side. I replaced these nuts in here with locking nuts so they're not going to come loose with any vibration. As you saw earlier, we firmed up the top here. So that's got some maple pieces on the top, so we're pretty steady there. I'm not going to get any rocking. I have set up the router bit. I've just got a little half inch bit in there. And we're just going to take a little sliver off this on our first pass. Huh. Hey, what could possibly go wrong? All right, you're seeing it live. All right, that seemed to do the trick. I'm not too sure what yet which is best to go this way or to go back and forth this way. So I'm just experimenting a little bit. That was a very light pass, so I'm gonna lower the bit just a tiny little uh, amount. I don't have uh, quite the uh, same kind of mechanism for lowering this bit on this router as I do on my other ones, so this is a little more hit and miss. Okay, it just came down a little bit. And what I have on this is a half inch bit, not a three quarter inch bit. So I'm taking off even less. All right, let's see what happens. Pass two.
Okay, got some very light marks off here. I, I kind of like going this way rather than back and forth this way. I think there's a little bit more control. Uh, so I'm gonna lower down a little bit more and we'll take a few bigger bites. going to pause here and bring the camera over so you can see how this is working. I'm really happy with that. So you can see as the router makes a pass, we're taking a little bit off here. There's a low spot right in here uh, that we haven't hit yet. You can see this low spot. I, I don't know if that'll show up too well, but there's actually a kind of a gouge in there. It's a little bit high here. So taking some off there. You can see we've got a little bit of a low spot in there, but we're just kind of touching the bottom of it. A little high up here, low spot there, and we're just touching down here. So, yeah, from here to here is quite a low spot, but we'll get there. This is working. Hey, how about that? A nice, uh, smooth and round surface. All right, I'll carry on. So that's uh, gone completely over the surface on this edge. I still have a low spot, quite a low spot over here. So it may take uh, one, possibly two more passes. There's a low spot here, a low spot here. Yeah, a little bit low over here. Mostly over here, but a little bit over here. Maybe one more pass will do it. Oh, this is just working really, really, really well. Okay. One more adjustment. Part of the challenge of learning a new tool is where to hold it and how to, how to drive it. So I'm learning a little bit as I go. Seems uh, one hand on here, I gotta get it in the right position. And the other hand, oh, you can't see where I'm holding it. One hand in, right in here holding the sled and the other hand tilting the pivot back and forth. And I have to come up with names for all these parts. I keep calling it a different thing every time I talk about it. So. All right, having made that pass, I'm gonna do one more just to take out this low spot and there's a little bit of a low spot here. Uh, but after that, I think we're good and we'll uh, then be ready to try and tackle some ribbing. That's gonna, or, or beating rather, that's gonna be interesting. All right, one more adjustment.
Okay, that got it. That did everything. We got perfect curve. Just really, really happy with that curve. That the result is just really nice. Really nice. Okay. Uh, so next trick is to be able to lock this pivoting part in place. Then move this back and forth. Move a little bit. Go back. Move a little bit. Go back to cut the beads. So I'm going to come up with a mechanism for that now. But uh, phase one. Rounding works a treat. Okay, so uh, next step is uh, finding a way to enable me to stop or position rather this. Um, I want to be able to position the router in our arc circle plates, arc, sorry, our arc cutter. I want to be able to position it exactly the right spot. Um, in order for me to cut beads. Now, to do that, I need to have some sort of circle that comes around here like this that I can clamp this onto. So, I have a piece of material here that I'm gonna be using. Um, I'm gonna use my router fixed to a, a circle template jig and we'll be cutting out a trough or a, a, not a trough but a slot all around here that a bolt can go through and I can use that to clamp onto the uh, onto the arc circle jig uh, then I'll probably just use the bandsaw and cut this out on the outside edge I, I'll keep the middle intact. I originally was thinking maybe I'd cut out this inside edge too, so I just have this one strip. But I think I'm going to leave all of that intact, and I'll just probably cut around the outside, uh, give it a little bit more strength. So that's what um, that's what we're going to try and do now. I've just done a little rearranging for this operation. I put in a nail here and a nail over here to act as stops for the router when it gets to either end. This is going to require a couple passes. I'm trying to go through some thick material, but I have in the router a spiral upcut bit to help clear some of the chips out of the uh, wood as it's being cut. So let's just see how we do with that. Okay, there we are. We now have a facility for stopping the uh, router, our arc cutting router sled anywhere we want. Um, for want of a wing nut, this isn't going to be not quite as good as I want. I have to use a wrench to tighten that up. But I'll uh, do something about that as soon as I get some 3D printer element or filament. It should arrive tomorrow. I can print a little knob for that, which would make it a little better. But, as you can see, I can now move the uh, sled in a stationary position. So I'm all set up to do some beading. So I think I'll put a bead in there now, a beading bit in there now, and we'll uh, do a couple little test cuts right here on this bottom edge just to see how that's going to work. All right, I've got our uh, beading bit set up in a rather, you're in a rather peculiar angle here. 
kind of looking up underneath the router. So that's the beading bit right there. This is the edge we're gonna go after. Not really sure what's gonna happen. So what could possibly go wrong? All right, that was the first attempt ever at using a beading bit and right on the very edge of a piece. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna move it up a little bit uh, and then take another cut and we should get a nice bead right there. Give me a minute to set up. So there's our first bead cut, not happy though. Uh, I think I moved it twice as far as it should have gone. So I'm gonna move it back to halfway and uh, we'll do another pass and that should give us two beads actually. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm marking on the edge here where that bead needs, where we need to move the router. So um, by moving this arm up, I can, I'll make uh, the same graduated marks all the way along and we should be able to make beads exactly uniform all the way across the piece. It's just kind of understanding where that first, what that first bead is gonna look like. So I'll make one more pass, setting the, the arm to here and that should give us a cut right through the middle of that. So that's what the bead looks like after cutting right down the middle. And it looks like I'm, that was too little. So where I had set was, uh, I tried to go 15, the um, 15 millimeters from uh, valley to valley. And that's what this cut was. So then I went halfway, that's seven and a half, you know, roughly millimeters from that, the, this valley to this valley. So it looks like what I should probably be doing is something a little closer to 10, 10 millimeters from valley to valley. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna make one more cut here, uh, sorry, a cut here, and we'll go about 15 mil or 10 millimeters. Not focusing very well. So I'm gonna go from here to here, about 10 millimeters, uh, and, and we'll see what kind of a bead we get off that. So a couple more adjustments here and you can see the difference that it's made. Um, I'm now moving eight millimeters valley to valley and uh, I raised the bit just a little bit, about a sixteenth of an inch. And I think I've raised it probably a little bit too far. It looks like eight millimeters is gonna be the distance that I want from valley to valley. But I'm gonna drop the bit down a little bit and do these two cuts again. Okay, I think I got it. I uh, dropped the uh, bit down one millimeter and I'm keeping the eight millimeters uh, spacing. Now, when I say eight millimeters, I'm going eight millimeters here. It actually works out to be about nine millimeters uh, up at this radius. This is a little bit higher, remember. So, um, to that end then, I'm gonna mark uh, all the way around here at eight millimeter increments. So I have a nice place, I know exactly where to stop uh, our swing arm. And uh, then we'll get ready and do some, we'll do beads on the rest of this piece. So I thought I'd walk you through the whole process of making a pass on, the, on for a bead. So I start by, this is where knobs would come in really handy, uh, just kind of loosening off the, the arm, moving it to the next position.
tightening it down. Oops. I'm off by a little bit. Let me just readjust that. There we are. Clamp it down. Then move on to the next bead. So you've seen me take incremental steps on doing the beading. I'm going to do the remainder of it. I'll put it on time lapse so it'll be a little bit faster and you can just kind of see the progression of this. And here is our finished piece. Okay, not quite finished. I have to do some sanding on it and cut it down just a little bit. But uh, that's the finish that we're looking for. So we got a nice, the curve is just perfect. It's just following the contour of our um, table perfectly. Uh, we've got some nice beading on it. Yeah, really, really happy with the result. So, hey, what do you know? Our little uh, arc router sled, arc cutting router sled, works a treat. A couple little things I'll need to do. Uh, one is I want to get a knob on here. Working with wrenches is just a pain in the butt. Um, I'll also get a, a little bit better for cable tie to hold that out of the way. Um, I do want to replace these with 3D printed parts rather than uh, what I have there. Yeah, and uh, well, probably a couple other little things uh, here and there. Anyway, leave uh, some feedback in the comments, if you will. Uh, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching. See you on the next video.